Okay, so we are here from First Federal Bank of Florida. How many of you guys have even heard of us? Okay, that's good. That's actually really good. This is Angie. She's the branch manager, and I work under her as a financial specialist. Um, Angie's been in the field for... 45 years. Some, yeah, been in there a while, and I've been in the field for about eight to nine years. That tells how old I am, but... <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, okay, so today we're going over the importance of savings and loans. What does savings mean to you guys? What does that mean? Saving that money and not spending it. Okay. Um, how, you know, with kind of like a show of hands, how many actually have a savings? And actually, how many you're contributing to the savings? Okay. How much would, how many of you would say that you probably have enough for a down payment for a car in your savings? <laughs> so, a good amount. Okay. Um, good job, good job there. Yeah, very good. Um, well, that goes into, you know, as of 2016, you know, only about 69% of um, Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings. Millennials, which would be you guys, um, actually fall shorter than that. About 72% only have 1000 Most don't even have a savings. How many of you learned about savings in high school and the importance of it? So, a couple. Okay. Okay, so that's why we're here. Um, especially at your age group, if you're not still living at home, you know, you'll eventually be moving out, maybe after college or so, you're going to need savings because you're going to find that you're going to need startup costs, you're going to need money to put down an apartment, a car, light bill, whatever it may be. Um, we're going to go over the importance of credit and what saving plays into that. When do you think you would, besides those kind of things, when do you think a savings would come in hand? Mm-hmm one of the main things is having a, a backup if something happens. Um, when we look at credit, um, we're looking for four different things, and savings plays a part of that. Um, there's four C's to credit. There's character. The character is going to tell us um, about your financial history. Most of you probably don't have any financial history, so you're going to be starting up your credit, which means you have nothing, which is almost as bad as sometimes having no, no credit. It's almost like having bad credit a lot of times. So. When you have no credit, we're going to look at actually what maybe you've put aside. We're going to look at your net worth. You know, what have you done to save money and put aside to put down on a car payment to tell us whether, you know, we're going to give you a loan, if that makes sense. That makes sense with everyone so far? Okay. Then we're going to look at the capacity. Um, can you, if we were to lend you money, can you repay it? Have you been on a job long enough? Um, do you make enough money? Again, what do you have in that savings? If we give you a loan for 3000 for two years, are you going to be able to pay it with a monthly payment that's comfortable in your annual range of um, income? Um, we're also going to look at your capital, which is that goes back into your net worth. You know, how much do you guys have put aside? What is the number that's assigned to you? You can say anything you want to, Angie, if you need to add in. And then collateral, which is where we're going to get into this fun exercise here in just a little bit. We're going to go over what loans actually cost you because they cost a bank and they also cost you, the consumer and the borrower. Um, there's different kind of loans. There's startup loans. There's your vehicle loans. There's your home loans, which are going to be later on in your future. But right now, I think um, a lot of you probably may have starter credit cards or some of you may already have car loans. How many of you actually have a car loan in here? So one, two. Okay. Have you, how many of you already have credit cards? About and, four or five. I know one thing that um, we kind of beware of when we're doing it for the high school and kind of going over the same mm -hmm. stuff is, you know, you get a lot of credit card offers in the mail that you'll, you'll send out there and you could actually owe a whole lot of money sometimes and not even have a job. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that we say beware when you get those. Just because they're offering it to you doesn't mean you should take it. Because some of them are, you know, you need to look at the interest rates. You need to look at what, what your form of our capacity, as she says earlier, how you can repay it. Um, you know, you don't want to just get out there and, and, and you, a lot of times you have student loans. And that's great because that's going for your school. But when you get that, and the credit card could do the same thing. It could supplement your income for that. But I just always like to tell um, anybody I speak to, be very careful of getting too much credit, you know, when you don't have the capacity to pay it back. Because you can start out young being going into bankruptcy or something yeah. and you don't want to do that kind of thing. You could be coming out of college going straight into bankruptcy and then that affects you for years. Um, okay, so what if I asked you to lend me your money? What would you say? That's an open question. Interest. <laughs> yep, so you're expecting money in return, so you're expecting something, okay. Um, what, okay, what, besides the money and stuff, what, what would you ask me? What would you actually expect other than the interest? 
Would you? An interest rate or something? Well, I mean, would you just go on good faith? Would you just assume that I'm going to pay it back? I'd ask you what kind of job you have, mm -hmm. how much money you made, that kind of stuff. So you're looking to see if I could actually you pay you, make period. Sure you pay me back first. Yeah, before you actually lend out that 4000 or so dollars, because yes, you may never see it again yeah. if you don't know me. Okay. So borrowing money is a responsibility. When you borrow money, you have to pay it back, and you are borrowing the bank's money or somebody's money. So there's going to be interest involved. So whenever you think of borrowing $3,000, you are not just paying $3,000 back. You could be paying $350 back over the course of two, three years, whatever it means. Um, when, is, when is it a good idea to borrow money, and when is it not? And that's an open question, too. Maybe for your house, but mm -hmm. not for a set of new rims for your car? <laughs> yes, that's correct. So maybe, you know, in here I know we don't do student loans here, but maybe to afford maybe school, but maybe it's not so much to buy new clothes at the mall, mm -hmm. possibly, you know. You have to do your needs and your wants. Your loans really and your credit card should be needs. Now, we, we're going to have things that we're going to charge for wants too, but to start we off, you know, we, yeah, yeah, we do. We always want something. but. Um, you have to think about it, you're going to have to pay that money back. So, and a dollar is worth more now today than it is later. And I know you, if you haven't already learned that, I don't know if it's Gamble Teeth, I can't remember if you went over that when I was in here, but you will learn that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start passing out these sheets. You already have the copy? She's making copies. Okay. Right okay. okay, we'll start passing them out. We're going to kind of go over um, what a car loan may cost you so you can see the difference in interest rates how much you've saved and put down and what it cost you with putting money down and what it cost you with not putting money down. Because you'll get sometimes where a lower payment looks good, but in the long run, is it the best thing? Because you may actually be spending more on that car and that loan than you anticipated. So she's passing those out. So for the ones that have had to borrow money, were you guys able to do it on your own, or did you have to have co-signers, or? The second time, we had to have a co-signer. I mean, the first time. First time? Mm-hmm. And that usually does happen. Um, some places will do starter credit cards. Um, they're usually three or 500 if that. Most places, if you don't have money, the best way to start your credit is usually doing some kind of secured card or secured loan. That usually bar means borrowing um, funds against your own cash. So if you get money that you can put aside, you can actually take a loan against your own money for a really low rate. And that's how a lot of people your age actually start off borrowing money and building their credit. We're going to need a few more copies. We're going to need a few more? Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right, so we are waiting on that. That's our next exercise. What would you like to say, Angie? Do we have anything we need to do? Okay. Well, I'll say something just about the bank right now if yeah. you want me to do that for a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you already have checking accounts in here. This will just be a little plug for the bank here. Um, we do have free checking for 16 to 30. 30. Mm -hmm. And see, Sarah has to keep me straight because she's <laughs> the one that does them all every day. The 16 to 30. We have free checking where you get your debit card free. You have online banking free. Um, do they get their first set of checks? No. Mm -mm. No. no, now checks are a little bit different, and you know, if, I don't know how many you actually use checks in here. Like one, two, three, yeah. Checks, checks aren't used as much. Um, checks would, you know, checks are a cost um, for the customers, but I mean, you get your debit card the same day. We have the online banking. How many of you use online banking? The mobile banking. The mobile banking. Yeah, the, yeah, that's a big thing. And see, on there, you can do online bill pay. We can do pop money where you can send money from one person to another person. So, I mean, if you need checks, that's great. If you don't, we have other alternatives. And usually the only time a person really needs a check, some, sometimes, and you don't even have to have them for that, but this is my personal, what I do is I generally do pay some things like a light bill, but yeah. now really you, you could just yeah. do it online. I just I mean, go online and I put my routing and account number and it pays it. Mm -hmm. So really, so. Um, I'm a little old school because I'm a little older. See, the younger <laughs> you are, the more you don't need checks at all. But sometimes if you're doing something that you really just want that, kind of little receipt like because a check's always a good receipt mm -hmm. and um, you know you might want it you don't have to have them but it's just something that you could use you know but anyway we do have those um, from 16 to 30 free we do did you have a question Why after 30 what kind of there we expect usually by that time because now today people get started a little bit later in life 
So your average person that goes back to college, there's a lot of people that start off around your age and they actually quit going and maybe they get back into college and they finish late. I mean, I'm a prime example. I actually took Ms. Gamble's class, what, about two years ago now? Two years ago. Yep, I took both of hers and I went back to college later and I'm actually um, at my end of accounting now. Um, but by that time, normally by the age of 30, you would maybe already be out, hopefully in the career that you went to school for and you are well financially set and you're going to carry different balances than someone say in their 16, you know, 16 year old in their 20s normally would. So then they, those would have a different fee. They're normally about, it really just depends, about $7 a month is what they run, but they also have ways to waive them by keeping certain balances and things like that. And normally by that time, you're usually set and you're more financially stable. So does that answer your question? So we try to give you enough time to get things in order because now what is it like maybe 27 or 28 by the time people are actually mm -hmm. buying houses, getting situations, you know, get, getting situated and everything. So it's a little bit later than what it used to be. So, okay, does everyone have a packet now? Do we have? Do we get all the copies? Okay, everyone's got one. Okay, so we're going to do a scenario, and we can actually write this on the board with you. Okay. You guys can figure this out if you want to, but it's pretty easy. Um, so the first one's already. Yeah, you have. Do you, I think okay. you have better handwriting than me too. Okay, the first one. I'm just going to tell you the first one's already lined up. This is like the scenarios we're doing. Okay. So we are going to borrow, um, this is in the thousands, let me see, okay, <laughs> okay, so for the first one that we're showing you that's already done, we're going to borrow 3,500, so mm -hmm. we're going to borrow it for two years at a rate of 6%, so we're act okay, go back to we're actually buying a car for 4,000, but we are putting 500 down, we have a savings of 500 that we want to put towards the car so we only have to borrow $3,500. So we're putting 500 down? Yes, we are putting 500 down. Now, on the back, we have a chart. If you guys will turn to the next sheet, find where the, it's the number of years, so we're borrowing for two years, and the rate is going to be 6%. Find the number for the 6%, and the first one's already filled out for you if you'll look on the front, so we're just trying to show you how to, how you can figure in the future what you're going to be paying for something. So you have that um, 6%, okay, or, yeah, I'm going the wrong way. Two years, 6% It's going to cost you 44.32 per thousand. So what, what's that's going to cost you? So now we're only doing it by 3,500. 3, so if you were to take and multiply that by the 24 months, you're going to get a monthly payment of 155.12. That's how much you're going to pay for that car every year. That's 24 payments that you're going to pay every month. I'm not right, very neat, but that's all right. That's okay. Now, if you look, you have the total cost of the loan. If you were to take the 155.12 and you were to do it by the 24 payments, this is not paying anything extra during the month because you can always pay more during a month and you can pay less on that loan. Um, but if you were not to pay any extra payments, then you would spend 37.22 of your money back on that loan, but with the 500 for the total car, it's going to cost you 4,222. So you bought a car for 4,000 and it cost you $222 total. Does that make sense? Am I losing you guys? Yes, yeah, ask questions if it, because we are kind of. We, we've done this, so it makes a little <laughs> bit more sense when we look at it, okay? But one of the things, too, that I like to point out, 6% it's really not bad. is a good rate. Well, it's really a good yeah, rate. it's not bad at all. As far as, um, you know, especially if you don't have any credit, mm -hmm. you probably might not even get one for that. I'm not sure, what, you know what ours is right now? I think it is like 5.99 yeah, or something yeah, like that. It's, it's lower. a brand new car. But it's something to think about. If you had bad credit, it could go up to 10% or more. Well, if you go to a dealership, it can go up to 19. Yeah. So you think about that. So always, and we always say rate shop before you uh, car shop. Always you look. just go to the dealership and think, well, because they say they do have 1.99, that doesn't mean you're going to get it. It doesn't mean don't go to the dealership. It just means yeah. rate shop before you right. go to the dealership. Know what you can already spend what you can afford and what kind of rate you're looking for. Because a lot of times the dealership is the cheapest rate. Okay. Who wants to help me with the next one? So we are looking at 24 months, 6%, no down payment, so we don't have a savings to put anything down. And we are borrowing 4000 So we'll put 6% 6 in the first block. The number of years is the two years. And if you'll go to the chart and look at the two years at 6%, what does that give us for the amount 
in interest per thousand. Yeah, it's going to be the same thing as the first one because we didn't, we didn't change the term or the interest. But now we're going to do it at 4,000 instead of 3,500 because we're not putting any money down. And um, if anyone knows quick math, they can do it. If not, I mean, we can shout out the answer. So. I didn't even write it at down too. So. Does anyone want to figure that or do you just want me to tell you? Very good, that's correct. Okay, now how much would the total loan cost you, the total loan and the car cost you over the course of 24 months, 24 payments? Uh, 4254 and 72 Correct. Very good. Now it's not a huge difference. If you can look at the two different amounts, it's not a huge difference. That's not normally the way it works with interest rates and stuff. You can see that you only, it's only $30 more, but you still spent more with putting more, no money down. You spent more in interest than you would if you would have put the $500 down. Normally that's not that same scenario, it's usually a huge difference. Okay, the next one, we're doing 48 months at 9%. You wanna put it on the board? Okay. Okay, we got our 48 months, 9%, $500 down. Borrowing $4,000? We're going to borrow $3,500. We need, we're putting $500 down. Yes. <coughs> okay, who wants to look up that and give me what the um, amount in interest per, per thousand is? So we need to find the 48 months, four years at 9%. 24 dollars very good. So we're going to pay $24.89 per thousand. And then we have, now we're only doing $3,500. So how much is that going to cost us a month? $87. Correct. Wait, you're on the wrong one. This one, you're on the wrong one, right there. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. You're on the 4432? Yeah, no, we're on, we're, we're on this one, so you're on this right here, 8711. Yeah. Or it's 8712. If you round up, it's 8712. Okay, now take that 8712. If you were not to pay anything extra and you kept this car loan for four years, what are you going to spend total on the loan? Just on the loan? Uh, $4,181.76. That's correct. So over that, you would have spent. So you only. Okay, if you look at this, this is the difference. You borrowed three and you borrowed three thousand five hundred just on the loan side you're paying forty one eighty one back to the bank that's the difference that's over that's six hundred and eighty one dollars that you're paying in interest for a car okay now if you do the total add the five hundred dollars back into that how much are you going to pay total for the car and the loan you just add that five hundred back to the forty one eighty one Okay, so that's the total cost that it's going to cost you as a consumer to buy a loan or to buy a car at 9% for 48 months. You see that difference in that interest rate right there? It's a pretty big difference. Um, now we have a 48 month, just you can actually just take off the, we're not putting 500 down. Okay. We're doing the same thing, but we're not putting any money down. It's going to be the same interest, so it's going to be the 2489, everything is the same. Now we're going to multiply that by the actual, the thousands. How much do we get? is the monthly payment now? $99.56. That's correct. How much is that loan going to cost us? $4,778.38. Very good. And now you can see the difference in putting money down versus not putting money down. If you, had, if you were to put the money down, you're going to save money because the loan and the car total was going to cost you $46.81. You didn't put any money down this next time. So this time it cost you forty-seven seventy-eight. So you're paying more without putting that money down. So your best interest is to have a savings, put money down. The next one, um, we're just going to kind of create one and go from there. I oh. <laughs> okay. This shows the difference, though. This is the total amount. This is the first one, right? Yeah, that's the first one. Okay. Yeah. This is the total amount we paid with putting the five hundred down at nine percent. This is the total amount we're paying total between the bank and the loan and the car and everything and this is the difference for not putting any money down this is the difference so it's over you know it's about a hundred dollars difference just on this, this one yes and this last one we're just gonna do we're gonna kind of throw at you okay this is more the next one I'm gonna do is more of a um, probably a real scenario 
because I, you're probably not going to buy a car for three, four thousand dollars to be honest. Your car now for your first start is probably going to cost you around ten thousand, maybe more. I mean, if you're wanting a nicer car, it's not going to be three or four thousand dollars. It doesn't work like that. Um, so we're going to do sixty months, and I'm going to, uh -huh, I'm going to say four percent, because that's kind of around the ballpark. It just really depends on your credit. That's, that's about the around the par ballpark, 4 to 5% is what the interest rates are around for cars right now. So I have 4%, 5 years, how much is that thousand? 1892. Correct, 1842. And I'm borrowing it for 10 years. Or not, no, not 10 years, sorry, 5 years, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I had a 10 in here. Borrowing it for 5 years, 10,000, how much is my monthly payment? One eighty one eighty four fifty cents. It's twenty, but you're good. You got it. Are you a math major? No. no? Okay. <laughs> but I was gonna see if maybe you were finance or something. <laughs> okay, so that's gonna be one eighty four twenty a month. So it's a little bit higher than the other ones. So when you're going out and looking for a vehicle, you know, most likely you're not gonna get one for three or four thousand. This is probably generally where you're gonna be around. So this is about the kind of payment you're gonna be looking for. I mean you're gonna be anywhere from about this to like what? 220, 230 is really what a car loan about cost, and you know, depending on what kind of car you want. Depending so, on how nice the car is. yeah, depending on how nice the car is, how good of the deal you got, and how much you put and down, and how much you finance. You or you did it on your own. That's right. And then how much you put down and finance it. You know, if you put some money down on this, this is going to cost you less a month. So, if you only have a budget that you can spend, I don't know, $500 buy yourself beside all your bills and everything that you already have, but you need a car. You have $500 extra. I mean, is this going to be realistic? You're going to be left with like $320 right after that. You're, you're going to be able to live on that for the rest of the month? Not really. Not really. But you have to think about that when you're financing. And that's what we look at when you come in and you apply for something. We look at that. How much money is going to be left in your pocket? Realistically, are you going to be able to pay us back and live on your income? That's what we're going to be looking at. Okay, so the total cost for uh, 184.20 at 60 months is going to cost us what for the total of the loan? Correct. So the vehicle is going to cost the oh, you already went ahead. It's going to cost the 11,052. So borrowing this at the five years at 10,000 is going to cost you 1,000 dollars and 52 to borrow that vehicle. That's how much money you're going to pay back to the bank for borrowing. We're not saying don't borrow. Borrowing's good because I mean. How many of you actually just have 10,000 sitting around that you can go buy a vehicle? If you do, that's great. But it's usually that's not the way that works. So at one point in your life, you're going to have to borrow money. And you need to know how much your money is worth and what it's going to get you. And if you can pay for it. Um, so, but like I said, if you had put money down, say if you put 1,000 down, that would reduce this dramatically. So I guess our, our really why we're here today is we're trying to talk to you about the importance of savings and credit. I know... A lot of times in high schools they don't go over this stuff. It's something important that you kind of just get thrown out into the world and you come apply for a car loan and we try to tell you how it, you know, how it works and sometimes you leave more confused because we've been doing it for so long we're just trying to tell you this is how it works. Um, does anybody have any questions about these scenarios? Has this helped anybody understand when they go to buy a car? Yeah? <laughs> you have to shake your head yes. <laughs> Any questions at all? Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the exercise and hopefully we didn't go too fast or overwhelm you or but it you know it's just just something that we want to share so that way when you come and see us or whoever you may go to that you'll you know know what to expect what is expected of you and what's expected of us. When you sit down with us and maybe buy your first car or get a personal loan or a credit card whatever it may be. So, we're going to go ahead and draw some names. We have two gift cards we're giving out. To this class, and then we have another class at 10:30. Yes, Miss Campbell. Yes, we do not. We actually don't. There are some of the bigger banks that do them. Um, we don't just because of the whole repayment thing. We don't. We can't do the same thing like the federal government does, where if you go through, you don't have to pay while you're in school. So you don't have the option to do that. I think some of the bigger ones do offer those kind of loans. And I know we don't do them here anymore at Chipola, so. Which those are okay to have, but you have to remember when you take out those student loans, you're in school, you're going to have to pay them back. They don't just go away. 
And I mean, I know someone that she just got out of her bachelor's and she owes 140,000 in student loans. Yeah, and she has to pay that back. And when they look at that, they, they do take that into consideration. When you're buying a car and you're buying a home, they look at that student loan because you will have to pay it back eventually. If you go out and, you know, the, most homes will cost, it just depends on your home and stuff, you know, $100,000. you are going to have $240,000 on your credit between that student loan and that home. And you may only be 25 at the time, and you owe that much money. And then you put a car on it. Say you put some credit cards, you could be up to almost 300000 in debt at 25. You know how long did it take you to pay that off? long time. Well, a house, they put a house out for 30 years, so they do payments based on 30 years, but that means it could be 30, 40 years before you're out of debt. So hopefully you would be able to retire with no debt, but. Now, one good thing to mention about student loans, or is something that I think is good with my children, um, they both had student loans, and one ended up having to pay all of it back itself. You know, because his job didn't buy his contract, mm -hmm. but something you can remember according to what field you go into. I always think about those student loans when you're negotiating that first job. A lot mm -hmm. of times your employer will help you pay those loans off. They won't just pay them all off usually right up front, but mm -hmm. they'll say every year you work, they'll pay maybe 2000 or $2,500. I don't know. It could be more according to what kind of field you go into. But um, I know my daughter, she went into nursing. So if she did a certain job, you know, with, it was with the county. It had to be with the county, not necessarily our county, but some county job, you know, like the health department, that type mm -hmm. of thing, or in the schools or something. And she ended up, each year, they paid like 2500 on hers. So it is just something to keep in the back of your mind that, you know, when you are negotiating that first job, that sometimes those people will help you mm -hmm. pay those off. And it's good always, you know, to look and see at your current job, um, you know, do they have any tuition help? Because like where we are, we do, you know, um, which I don't have to use it much, but, um, but they do. A lot of them will actually help you pay for your college tuition as long as you're making A's and B's. I'm not going to do it if you fail, but, <laughs> <laughs> but as long as you're, you know, you're passing and doing good and it's towards not really the same job maybe you're in, but maybe towards the same career. If you're in business and you're working in sales or customer service, they'll, they want you to better yourselves. So they want you to get the education and the degree. So, you know, something to think about, too. Angie, would you like to pull some names? You already got well, some? I got them. Oh, pull them for okay. Me. I was worried I was going to pull Gavin's name. They